Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Wednesday, May 22nd, 2024. May God be with you today and may His peace be on your life continually. And I pray that as you go throughout the day that you will remember who it is that woke you up this morning. You will remember that He is your provider and He is the one that will guide you as you go throughout the day. I pray that He will bless you today, that He will bless your families and that you will look to Him at all times. Our reading today comes to us from Isaiah chapter 26, reading from verse 19 to 20. Reading from verse 19 to 21. And it says, Thy dead men shall live, together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hid thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpass. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth shall the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Amen. Let's give God thanks this morning for his words. I pray that you will be blessed this morning and that you will be encouraged as you listen. Now, after careful examination of this text, you know, it brings hope to my heart to know that death is not the end and that one day, those who are faithful to God, they will live again. And so death, death is something that most of us cannot get used to. I know there are those in the world today who are very callous as it relates to death. They have gotten so used to it that it doesn't faze them. And I don't mean that in a good way. I don't mean in the sense where they have hope that, you know, if they live a faithful and good life in Christ that when they die that they will live again in his righteousness. I don't mean in that sense. I mean that they are so cold as Matthew would say that the heart of men are so cold that they will kill you in the blink of an eye. And we saw a lot of that took place during the dark ages. And not just in the dark ages but as we know it Christians especially commandment keeping Christians, they were being persecuted from day one. Remember Cain and Abel? Why did Cain kill Abel? Because what? He was obedient to God and he did exactly what God wanted. And so his righteousness, or I should say the righteousness of Christ in him, show up Cain unrighteousness and he just couldn't stand the fact that God showed Abel favored. And so he slew Abel, his own brother, for doing what is right. And I say that to say that we live in a world where that is the theme of the day. People will be against you for doing what is right. They will kill you for doing what is right. They will put you in prison for doing what is right. Do you know how many innocent people are in prison? all because they stood up for something and so they are lumped in with the guilty ones some are killed all because they stood up for something that is right and we see it every single day the moment you decide to stand up for truth the moment you decide to stand up for what is right you have made yourself an enemy of humanity and so they can snuff you out at a moment's notice. But be not dismayed. Because this text here tells us this morning that there's hope even in death. Because God, when he returns, is going to call forth his faithful one. Those who have made a covenant with him while they were alive. Those who remain faithful to him while they were alive is going to call them forth in the first resurrection. So at the coming of our Lord, if you come up in the first resurrection, 
you are good to go. But if you come up in the second resurrection, well, that is it for you. You are damned eternally. And so it is important for us to understand that what we do now, or we live our lives today, we are saying more or less that we want eternal life or we want eternal death. So the choice that we make today as a people, as Christian, as a deep consequence or privilege at the end of our lives. And so don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of death. I know death is scary. It is awful. Even I sometimes, I cringe, you know, because I'm saying that how can another human being take another new human being's life? I mean, when you die naturally, bad and not so bad because it's a natural death. But when somebody take your life for any reason at all, something that they cannot give, but they are so quick to take it, it pains my heart. But I'm just thankful to God that he is the life giver. And so I may lose my life here. One day I may die. I don't know how. I don't know when. But if that day should come, this text here is telling me that God is going to what? Keep me until that day, that faithful day when he will call me up to him. That is what verse 20 says. He says, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers. Chambers here can be what? The grave. And do what? Shut thy door about thee. Thyself, hid thyself as it were for a little time. So you will only remain in the dirt for a little time. This world is just so, it's almost unlivable because sin is at such a magnitude that it cannot be weighed in a scale anymore. And so those of us who will pass on into sleep until Jesus come, consider it a blessing, but only a blessing if you have been faithful. But we who are alive and well, we need to let those around us know that they need to make this covenant with God so that they can secure themselves or in other words, God can secure them until that fateful day. Because God, he says that, is going to deal with sin once and for all. He's going to deal with injustice and the earth is going to bring forth the reminder of those blood. And so the inhabitants of the hurt, the wicked, those who have refused God, give of righteousness. They will reap the wrath of God for their iniquity. And so friends, let us find comfort in the fact that we serve God and the God that we serve is not a dead God. I know many people around the world and many nominal churches and so many people would want us to believe that what we believe, they are such fable and they have no weight. You know, but I have come to the conclusion and the understanding that when person question you and question your faith in the word of God and your confidence in the word of God, and I speak and I am talking about the thus said the Lord. They question it because one, they are afraid or two, they do not understand. And three, the devil has completely clouded their mind and their heart has become so hardened towards what is right. Not just as it relates to the word of God, but what is actually morally correct. And so anything that would see to highlight the wrongs or to put you in a position or put them or to put them in a position that makes them uncomfortable they just paint a black card over it and say this is it see there these people this is what they are doing that is what they are doing they are brainwashing these people and they are brainwashing you and all all kind of nonsense but I say to you this morning, remain faithful. Continue to trust God. Don't waver in your conviction because wavering in your conviction will only make you just like them and it will cause you this everlasting life that we are promised at the last 
day at the coming of Jesus Christ. So friends, may God continue to bless all of us. May we continue to be faithful and continue to wait for our Lord soon return. Amen.